and my name is David Duncan, and um, I have been working alongside uh, Dusty Mabe for a while now, um, making sure that we have the right kind of resources. And uh, just to let you know, uh, we're still here. Uh, we're still working. We have a lot of things that go in this year, and I think that that's uh, been um, <clears throat> it's been a really fun time just just in the last quarter to be to be working on uh, some of the things that we're doing. Um, but it, just to give you a, a kind of a clear idea of what it is that our mandate is, um, we're building the cloud images that are specifically for public and private uh, cloud configurations. Uh, starting with just the simple OpenStack images and uh, standard compressed RAW, but then doing some specialized images for uh, the requirements that we have for uh, Google Compute and uh, for Amazon. Um, we're not doing the Azure images just yet. Uh, I'd love to see that as a part of um, what we're working on, but um, it is uh, it's pretty easy to to uh, import the images to uh, to Azure for use if you're looking at it, and then also the Vagrant images we've been working on, and specifically the architectures that we focused on are x86-64 and Arch-64, um, and just support generally from uh, QEMU. Some housekeeping. Uh, recently, the meeting moved from Tuesday mornings, or well, Tuesday at 1400 UTC. Uh, to Thursday, and so now we have bi-weekly meetings um, and uh, a lovely function there um, <clears throat> showing you that uh, we're in the, uh, uh, we have a, the IRC channel for uh, Fedora Cloud, which is then uh, connected to uh, Matrix. Uh, directly in the email list for the group if you have any questions or want to participate. Uh, this is uh, where you want to go. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a few things that we've done here very recently um, and uh, some of the outcome there. We'll start with um, the hybrid boot. Um, if you don't know, uh, the cloud images were <clears throat> Are, the cloud images themselves are uh, or were typically set for uh, one boot type or the other, and the reason for that was because the x86-64 images were first, but then when the uh, ARM uh, ARM images were were created, we started um, uh, the there was a requirement to handle them uh, via UAFI. Uh, but we've got other things you know that are coming down the pipeline like. Um, like support for secure boot, um, that's an important part of supporting Azure, and we wanted to make sure that we have uh, everything together there. Um, and it was just common, um, you know, the Red Hat images are set to uh, to uh, hybrid boot. The uh, the images that we were um, that we were uh, um, working with for. Uh, or uh, SUSE's images or, or the open SUSE images were uh, also set for hybrid boot. I mean, it just seemed like it was time for us to catch up with that. Um, and uh, so it's super exciting to see that as a, an initiative for uh, for the next generation of um, of the cloud images and hoping that uh, that we're um, you know that this suits your needs and if there's something that uh, you can do to test this in your environment we'd certainly love to hear your feedback so uh this one was this is super exciting for me the uh the uh, use of, of butterfs by default as a file system so we modified the file system um for the the uh, uh, Fedora 35 uh, to include um, ButterFS instead of the uh, Extended 4. And uh, so there's a few things that I think are really excited about, uh, exciting about this. Uh, the, we uh, kept the standard single root volume format, uh, but ButterFS requires the slash home configuration be, be there as a sub volume. So 
uh, that was the one requirement we had to create a subvolume. That doesn't really uh, affect the um, the sizing, but it just uh, changes the logical partitioning. And uh, I thought this was kind of this was a really great idea um, because now we can do some things that are uh, specific to uh, next generation hardening requirements, like uh, you know, in in configuring boot boot time for um, for like a hardened image uh, in commercial Linux, it requires a, a fair number of individual EBS volumes be created and and attached at different locations, and uh, delays in the config delays in the boot up or instant start or reboots can potentially lead to places where that uh, that um, uh, like volume heavy configuration to get a hardened uh, or or modified uh, instance can lead to uh, just a miss on the on the boot itself. And so I was super excited to see that we're you know we have this opportunity to create sub volumes and then to make changes in these sub volumes that are similar to the ones that uh, we would have normally undertaken on a standard root volume, uh, maybe on premises or something uh, like making slash temp no exec, right? We can create a sub volume and then make that no exec. So the, as an image, this starts to fall sort of directly into uh, future plans for creating sim more simplified hardening models um, and uh, and just gives us some general recovery configurations that we can do, uh, adding redundant metadata, um, making volume snapshots super easy to work with. Uh, I don't know if you've worked with uh, cloud snapshots, but uh, doing block level replication of a volume takes a very long time. And if you want to do something that's a little bit more simple, you know, ButterFS is, is very much uh, um, equipped to handle doing uh, snapshot sends and other things that are a lot less complicated than uh, we can uh, than what we have to do to uh, make dramatic changes in configurations on specific volumes in cloud cloud environments so looking forward to this um I feel like this one was a uh, was a bit controversial so if you look back through the information that was um, or the just the discussions around the use of, of ButterFS on the images. Uh, there's some conversations about whether, you know, about the potential that this doesn't have necessarily have um, uh, an immediate effect on the um, on our downstream uh, support. And uh, but it still seems like the right thing to do. We're not you know we're not behind the the times in terms of of uh where other distributions are going and I, we just felt like this was a really good uh a really good time to do that so that's my slide um, one of the other things that we came across here recently uh, in the config was that the um, the vagrant images were uh, giant. They were huge, and uh, Chris Murphy, Chris Murphy, and Neil squashed this uh, this issue. Um, there was a, a process for zeroing out the um, the entire volume, and uh, the trim was not in fact, uh, correctly executed. Uh, so when the vagrant images were created, they were still the large size that they were when they were when uh, the kickstart configuration was built. Um, the result of the, this for the QCAL images was that they were uh, right size down to uh, the smaller volume type. But the but for uh, but the uh, decompressed volume for Vagrant ended up being super large, and and uh, Neil, thank you for uh, making the modifications in the Kickstart that made that made that work. Um, another thing that's going on is 
<laughs> yeah, you really, uh, you really did a lot of work on that. I super appreciate it. Uh, another thing that's going on now is the website revamp. Uh, so um, uh, Dusty and I worked out that I would uh, work with the website team on the revamp. Um, and I attended the first planning meeting, but there's more, uh, more. I mean, I think there's a lot of changes here um, that are expected, and uh, so we'll try and keep this in, um, you know, keep our keep ourselves in in the uh, in the forefront of the of the planning. Um, <clears throat> we want to restore the position of uh, the cloud images on the splash page so that they're easier to discover and hopefully we'll have some ways to get to um, specifically the images that customers want to use or per, you know, people want to use. Um, and then uh, we'll spend a lot of time reviewing the content together. So I'm looking forward to um, uh, as we as this revamp starts to come together, uh, working with the rest of the members of the special interest group to make sure that we're getting the right kind of representation. No. Um, what it is exactly where it is that we're we're moving, and then I guess I didn't finish my sentence. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, our PRD needs some some review and uh, maybe some <sighs> narrowing of scope needs to be a little more crisp. Not to say that it's a bad document, but that you know maybe we can um, maybe we can hone this down and uh, look at what our goals were then versus what our goals are now and uh, put this into a better perspective for ourselves. And I think the website revamp is a great opportunity for us to do that. So let's talk a little bit about what it is that we can do next. I, um, you know, it's interesting to me to, to know that like keeping the lights on is a very important part of what we do uh, as a cloud SIG. Um, Jeremy Ader, one of the OpenShift engineers, said to me one time that uh, the most important thing we can do is to provide uh, dial tone service. And I really took that to heart. I think that, you know, uh, what we have to do as a team is to make sure that um, all of these insane things <laughs> that we have to figure out, uh, like what Neil did with the, with the uh, uh, volume size, uh, have to get done so that uh, the customer, you know, the the experience with the cloud images is as consistent as it can possibly be. Um, but there's some questions I think uh, we should answer. Like, uh, can we um, can we work with the Neuro Fedora team to build some spins that make that um, make those uh, images useful in the context of cloud environments. I mean, there's all these other uh, service tools that could be integrated and and it would be really cool if we could build something that was sort of ready made um, and hand that out. Um, and that bring that begs the question of uh, what are we doing for task specific workloads and how do we help people? Yeah, VDI is, is exactly one of those spaces that would be really interesting, I think, because there's a there's a number of products out there that are that are free or uh, free to, free for use when when they're in place, and I think we can have some. Um, if we make it easier for for people to use them, I think that we can uh, we can put some pressure in some places where uh, some of that uh, is not yet open source, but it's still being considered for open source in terms of the VEI and other other uh, other gaming and on online experience and. I'd love for us to do, so I, I kind of have an answer in mind when I ask this question, right? Should we collaborate with the OS build team to provide solutions? And uh, I mean, I think that the answer is a resounding yes, but then on the other side, uh, there, are th uh, there are things that need to happen for us to be able to do that, right? I see Neil, you know, shrugging in the, in the comments and I, and I, I I'm like, I know what he's talking about. We've, you know, we're at a position where we can support, um, you know, ButterFS in our configurations. They're not quite there, uh, so I think that's somewhere where we can we can start to really have more heavily heavy collaboration and uh, determine how we can really sort of next keep that next generation uh, image building.
process in mind as we as we uh, continue forward. Um, <clears throat> so some of the things that I think we should we should uh, look at and and uh, and consider as a part of our charter for you know going forward um, is looking at how we can evaluate and look for alternatives in terms of faster boot times. Faster boot times seem to be a very um, cloud enablement uh, heavy metric. So I'd like to know where we are, and uh, I'm hoping that we can we can look at that um, as something that we keep track of and then understand and and use as a metric for ourselves to determine what it is that we are uh, you know whether or not we're successful with our improvements. Uh, I'd like to look at new subvolume configuration. So now that we've moved to ButterFS. Um, I think that we are going to have some more interesting configuration requirements for uh, for for the uh, cloud images, not just you know not just for one environment, but uh, in general. I think we'll find that we can we can make some subvolume configurations that are really helpful. Um, so I'd like to explore that and make sure that we're not doing that and ahead of you know ahead of the expectations for people who are using them. Uh, in their current state. And I'd love to see us work with the CI team uh, to increase the package gating and be able to report back to CI when packages that we think are uh, important for the, uh, you know, are critical to the success of the of the cloud, cloud images. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be that would be great, Chris. It might be might be fantastic if we could get the Open QA um, to start timing that boot that boot experience um, because I certainly don't want to do it for any specific environment. I want it to be something that we produce independently. Um, and in in an environment where we control everything, yeah. Um, so. Uh, uh, the same thing, you know, bootstrap that same CI gating with various cloud systems and providers. And that's not to say that I want us to do that work, but that I want to I want us to encourage them uh, to provide us feedback. Uh, I want to provide I want to encourage them to participate in the CI program and um, pass that information back into uh, the you know the the data grepper so that we can get that that information back into or or their the success or failure of image changes or package changes uh, associated directly from those cloud providers and uh, and then have that com you know have the conversation with the package maintainers. Right, we just don't. Oh, you mean so OpenQA is already doing that? Cool. Well, we'll we'll look into that more. So. Uh, and then uh, containers, the idea of adding containers under the cloud SIG, uh, I think that was uh, something that we've, you know, we've made some changes that were associated, were directly associated with the, the uh, containers. And there are some changes there that um, are uh, associated with the, the ButterFS configurations that we've already done that have been a little bit complicated to uh, gain support for, I'll say it that way. Um, and uh, I would love for us to be able to help um, increase the awareness of those of the Fedora containers and make sure that they're in all of the container registries that um, anyone would use, not just people who were expecting to find it in the locations that were associated with their Red Hat configurations. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, obviously we just want to be able to to do some profiling like some basic profiling to ensure that we have some performance comparisons and that that telemetry is something that we're keeping our eye on as we get best as we get uh, better at putting these images together so with that I'll uh, I'll um, 
leave this on to questions and discussions. If someone is interested in coming back, coming on and talking with me directly, that's great. If you, uh, if we have anything that's in the Q and A, I don't see any Q and A just yet. So, uh, but the chat's pretty full. Um, but I think this is where we are, and and some of the things that we want to work on, you know, moving forward. Um, and I'm encouraging everyone to come and participate with us or file bugs or talk to us about the things that we've done so far or the changes that we've made here in, in the first half of the year uh, and, and uh, look forward to doing uh, some more great work over the, like, the next half uh, together. Any other questions? Comments, more comments? Cool. Well, I'll leave it there and uh, I look forward to hearing from everyone and uh, uh, really appreciate you being here with me uh, while there's so many interesting things going on uh, at NEST this year. So thanks and uh, have a great rest of the conference.